Hello and welcome back to another game guide for Aliens Dark Descent. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look at the ultimate guide to stealth gameplay and combat gameplay. The reason why I bundle both of these together is because stealth gameplay is needed in order to avoid combat if you do it right. Most of the time you don't need to fight. However, once shit has hit the fan, you need to know what you're doing in order to survive uh, the actual combat and get out alive unscathed. So I figured both of the topics make for a good combination. My guides are generally concise, pretty much on point, no BS, no repetition, so buckle up and let's explore the subject together. Let's start with stealth combat first and foremost, because that is what you will be doing 95% of uh, the time. Stealth combat is whenever you are not uh, discovered by the hive. The hive can discover you and uh, when it does so, it will always start a hunt. The hunt essentially is a mechanic where the game sends the drones and available aliens to the last known location of all of your marines. So during that time, the aggressiveness of the hive will go up from easy over medium to hard. That means a higher number of patrols, that also means a quicker detection time, and that means from time to time so-called onslaughts, which you can find on the bar on the top right hand side. Whenever an onslaught happens, the aliens will basically charge at you and throw a large number of drones and sometimes tier 2 aliens in order to get rid of you. Now, that will induce a lot of stress, hence you want to prevent it in the first time to begin with. Now, when we talk about stealth gameplay, the first question that we need to answer is how do we avoid detection? For starters, you want to have motion uh, sensors. They are the bread and butter function because they serve two purposes. Number one, motion trackers allow you to see blips on the map, with the exception of only one level out of all of uh, the levels in the game, they function flawlessly. Whenever you do have motion sensors, they also have an overload function. The overload can be triggered in order to draw all of the aliens in the shortest line from their position to you, which means if you are planting them on all of the edges of the map or preferably even next to the ARC, the aliens will be drawn there and the ARC can kill it. Which brings me neatly to point number two, the ARC itself, as long as you don't uh, stand right next to it in a line of sight, will neither increase the hive aggression nor will it increase your stress level. So use it and use it plentiful because the ARC will kill aliens. Fair disclaimer, if uh, the ARC kills tier two aliens such as Praetorians or Crushers, you won't get the experience for that either. So what are the tools other than that in order to do the stealth run? You primarily want to stay out of sight from the aliens and you want to use non-discoverable means of killing them. The tool that the game gives you is number one mines, which you can plant. Most of the aliens die within one mine later in the game, specifically on nightmare difficulty, you need two mines per alien in order to actually get them down. The second option is the sniper rifle. Um, if you have the upgrade for a silenced sniper rifle, then uh, the uh, recon can kill an alien with that before it effectively rings alarm, which nicely brings me to the motion detection, depending on your difficulty setting and depending on the already existing hive aggressiveness, you will see a, a nice little um, orangish line between your position and the position of the enemies. It slowly fills with red. The moment that it has fully felt, uh, um, filled itself with red, you are officially being discovered. You can interrupt that by simply moving out of the way or hiding behind any form of cover. You will see that with green dots uh, that are indicated take cover and then you can use the control key in order to hide. So these are the options of staying out of sight. The big problem with the stealth gameplay is that the game unfortunately has a loop and a tendency of 
making it near impossible to stay completely outside of the aliens detection. For starters, you're oftentimes pushing into the aliens and with closed corridors, it is very unlikely that you will be able to snipe all of the aliens. Secondly, the aliens on the higher difficulty spawn faster than your command points regenerate. So unless you totally wait for prolonged periods of time, you cannot just kill everybody silently and stealthy. That doesn't mean you cannot progress in that matter. Um, oftentimes it is very efficient to do it, but it will just take a lot of time. Pro tip for stealth gameplay. Sometimes it makes sense to use your drone. You can uh, use that not only to scout out because uh, the aliens won't trigger the drone, but you can also use it in order to maybe open a door and then snipe through the door. The one thing that stealth um, gameplay is limited by is potentially the uh, ability of your SWAT to position correctly. There are plenty of times when you cannot get behind cover or when you are trying to snipe someone, but your sniper unfortunately is just not in the right place. Don't be discouraged by that. It's so totally normal. And at some point you don't need to let uh, practicality uh, come in the way of perfectionism. And sometimes therefore you need to go in guns blazing, which nicely brings me to the second part of this guide, which is the combat review. For the combat review, I wanted to shortly review the weapons and talk about how to use them properly and then talk about command points and how to use them within the actual combat. So for starters, every single Marine has a primary and a secondary weapon. And with the exception of the heavy pulse rifle, all of the weapons are available to all of the Marines. The standard weapon is the pulse rifle, which will fire bursts and have a grenade launcher from level six onwards that will be replaced by the heavy pulse rifle. And then finally at level 10 by the XM99A1 phased plasma pulse rifle, which is an absolute beast. These weapons, once you have uh, unlocked them, can be simply given to your Marines. The one note that I would give is I personally was a big fan of the grenades of the normal pulse rifle. If you upgrade all of your uh, rifles into heavy pulse rifles, you're losing that ability. So keep that in mind. The smart gun is the exception for the gunner, which is a heavier version for longer bursts, more ammunition, therefore, and just overall more DPS. Whenever you cannot use your primary weapon, when you're carrying someone or when you have run out of ammunition, when your arm is uh, damaged, you're typically using one-handed weapons. And again, service pistol is the starting weapon followed by the revolver from level three onwards and by the submachine gun from level six onwards. These guns are relatively straightforward, so I'm not going to uh, really review them in depth. Uh, it is a no-brainer to always upgrade them, maybe with the exception of the heavy pulse rifle, where when you are at level six, there can be an, an argument made to keep one pulse rifle so that you can use the actual uh, grenades of the normal pulse rifle. What is more interesting are the special weapons, because that's really what you can influence when you are fighting. Besides target selection, which you can uh, use in order to click on a single enemy, uh, you do have the option to use command points for special abilities. And I want to shortly go through them and talk you through my uh, train of thought of when and how to use them. For starters, the shotgun, which is an incredibly powerful uh, short range weapon, has a very short burst in zero to six meters and then a medium burst five to 10 meters. The weapon is great whenever you are fighting against aliens that are coming into a, a straight corridor. It deals a lot of damage and it was useful until the very end. Uh, the shotgun can shoot through allies without hitting them, so it's only really needed on one of the characters and is typically a last resort when the aliens come to close. It has a relatively high disembedment chance of, I think, uh, 30% in the, in the close range, which is great. So that weapon in itself is good. 
The mine at the beginning, uh, the grenade at the beginning of the normal pulse rifle is potentially the little bit stronger version as this mine um, deals 10 to 20 points of damage in an inner blast and 6 to 10 points of damage in an outer blast. And then there is even an upgrade to let the mine also slow the opponent. So as long as you use that, I found myself using less of shotgun is the weapon upgraded specifically into the plasma rifle tier where there was a less and less of a reason to keep a pulse rifle i transitioned fully into shotgun moving on to potentially the most important um, item the mine uh, it was the first one that i unlocked and i was never disappointed by it mines are strong they typically kill at the beginning of uh, the game every single alien in one blast later they will at least injure them and two mines typically kill uh, most of the tier one aliens uh, reliably. The mines have uh, the nice little added benefit that in many cases you can continue to plant them in, um, in slowed down situations where combat is not inherent and then therefore trivialize combat. So the mines are potentially the most overpowered of all of the items if you include the prep phases where you can completely trivialize combat by using them. Which brings me to the sniper rifle. Uh, both mine and sniper rifle are technically out of combat units. The sniper rifle is a bit in between. Uh, the sniper rifle is useful against uh, humanoid targets when they take cover. Uh, once uh, you take cover uh, for both your uh, marines as well as for the enemies, the damage from ballistic weapon is greatly reduced. So the sniper rifle is a good way of uh, even sniping mid combat and getting a single target down whilst focusing everybody else on another target. Which then brings us to the fourth and uh, second last item, which is the incinerator unit, AKA the flamethrower. Um, I did not understand it at the beginning, so I was skeptical, but I must say it has grown on me. The incinerator unit is less so a damaging unit. It is more an area denial. You can hold the mouse button, you can drag uh, the, uh, the direction, and then the entire region that you have dragged will start to burn. Aliens tend to path not through fire, which is fantastic because it allows you to just create artificial choke points. And with those choke points together with a shotgun, you can force them into your suppressive fire and then use the shotgun in order to finish them off as and when needed. Finally, the RPG launcher, which is a weapon that has a one and a half second offset delay, but deals by far the most damage. It is specifically good against chargers and alien queens. Two shots of uh, these against an alien queen and it is almost down. It is such a strong weapon and is particularly good for that. So we're going to take a look at how all of those weapons come together. And whilst I um, am uh, discussing and giving you some thoughts over that gameplay footage, we can talk about how uh, the command points are effectively used during a combat. So this gameplay footage is taken quite far into the game just to showcase all of uh, the different uh, weapons. As the combat starts, you typically want to have a choke point-ish uh, location. One, which allows you to further pull back because there will be jumping aliens that are coming towards you. A couple of things that you would want to set up whenever possible. I tend to use at least one flare if you have enough time, even use two or three. The flare has a relatively large uh, area of effect and within the flare, the DPS is substantially increased. Use one or two suppressing fires. They do not stack uh, with one another. However, they can be used to angle into different directions. The suppressing fire has a center angle. You can see that with the highlighted little dots uh, that are uh, indicated and you can basically center and move around that uh, central location uh, so that you can steer your entire team around it. So that's typically the preparation. You want to have enough um, command points to begin a fight with in a perfect uh, world. Uh, there are a couple of options if you run low on um, command points to deal with it. 
One is retribution. Retribution uh, builds up over time as you take damage and deal damage and take stress. At some point you are over a certain retribution threshold and then you can go nuts as they say. Uh, the, that will greatly increase the ability to uh, regenerate command points. So that is one way of doing it. The other one is to actually uh, sacrifice tools and put them into into command points in order uh, to just have more firepower. How I deal with fights in general is I try to um, funnel all of the aliens into one direction. Uh, here you see me using um, uh, more tools in order to get a couple of uh, command points back. Uh, so I try to funnel them through a suppressive fire and uh, am trying to then use most of uh, the abilities right away in, in order to keep them at least 10-15 uh, meters away. If that doesn't work, uh, slowly move backwards as uh, the backwards movement will still force them to come closer. They are slower than you are, typically speaking and uh, within uh, suppressed, uh, suppressed fire, you're, uh, you're easily going to outrun them. Whenever heavier enemies come, it is totally acceptable to just uh, move away and run, like uh, I've done it here, and then use grenade launchers in order to, uh, to get them down. If you can no longer withdraw, think about uh, the amount of hit points uh, as damage that you are taking. Even on the highest difficulty, you are going to take a moderate amount of hit points as long as you're not overwhelmed with aliens. So in other words, it is possible to quote unquote tank an alien for a period of time and not immediately uh, use a tool in that regard. And finally, the stress level. Uh, the stress level itself at the beginning of the game will be problematic and uh, there is only very there are only very limited ways of dealing with it as the game progresses you will see that uh, specifically the sergeants will have an option to deal with stress and ignore the stress levels and that should be um, used on cooldown you get that little green uh, finger that indicates that the stress levels can't rise anymore so whenever that was necessary I effectively used it a couple of words uh, um, uh, of info uh, the Marines can be interrupted uh, that can therefore then cause the suppressive fire to uh, also be interrupted so sometimes you need to reposition that and other than that, it is really a matter of carefully and slowly pulling back as often and as long as you can. And dish out as much damage as possible whilst minimizing your uh, stress, uh, stress levels. So I hope this fight um, gave you a good indication of how to use all of the tools available. Um, one last word of advice. Uh, tier 2 aliens such as the Praetorian and uh, the Charger are quasi immune to the sniper rifle so you've got to be a bit careful when using that. I hope all of this was uh, helpful for you. If you enjoyed uh, the guide to stealth and combat leave a comment and a like down below. How do you approach both of them? Let me know in the comment section and see you in one of the future guides. Bye bye!